Hi there, my name is Cindy James. I'm an encaustic artist in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Uh, welcome to my studio. Today is May 10th, 2020. It's also Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to uh, all the mums out there. Uh, I just wanted to share a little video today of um, a project I'd like to, to do. It's based on this. It uh, won't be exactly the same. In fact, I kind of wanted to try doing a little apple. And um, so I'm going to demonstrate that and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's get started. Uh, just a little note about my studio and what's going on here is I have my uh, studio set up with some leftover puppy training pads underneath this foil, which is taped down. And then I usually work for small projects on these silicone baking mats. They're um, relatively inexpensive and they work great for uh, a light a light fusing project or um, you know as long as you're not doing a, a large amount of heating right here it, it works great they don't uh, they don't overheat and I can also peel the wax off and reuse it which is very helpful this griddle is an Oster ceramic griddle I really like using this griddle because it has uh, the white surface so I can see the colors that I'm mixing and I keep my griddle at about 150 degrees. I'm just going to tilt the camera a little bit so you can see and uh, yeah it's it's great for when I'm teaching as well. It does tend to have a little bit of the pigment stick around the where the element is um, but usually I can get that off with some elbow grease um, and that's you know I think all griddles tend to do that the only one that doesn't really do that too much is this R&F palette over here and uh, but they're very expensive so I just have one of those and just a small one okay so hopefully I've got that set up good and um, better lay some brushes down to heat up. Okay, so I'm just going to put some background color down. And normally what I do, I, I'm going to work on this one that's already started. It's just a 4x4 four four piece of plywood. And... Uh, yeah, I, you don't need to see me layer everything up, but I, w I am going to put some dark color down first because when I inscribe my lines, I would like them to show up. So it doesn't have to be black. I have some a pot over here of just some old gray paints that I uh, sort of it's sort of my slop pot I call it I guess and. Um, usually end up with some greeny grays so I'm just gonna use that it actually is fairly dark I'm going to set my tools on here they're a little they need some cleaning and uh, I fuse with a propane torch My studio does have ventilation. I have a window just over here, which is normally open and I have a fan going, but I'm in my garage. It's not very fumy, so I'm, I've got it closed because it's a little chilly out today. It's a pretty cold Mother's Day, actually. All right, I'm just gonna get some of these bubbles out. Make sure I'm working on a nice smooth surface. And I'm going to put some color over top of that. Once it cools. And I've just kind of been trying to decide what I want to do for color. photo reference that I had initially planned to work from was uh, a bit of a winter scene. I'll, I'll add it into the video, but I find 
didn't want to have the white background, although it is good for demonstration purposes. So I think I'll just go with something really light. I have a, a light gray blue here, and maybe that will work. Try heating that up. And I'll see how my brushes are doing. That's not too bad. Maybe add a bit of weight in there. This is still warming up this, this bit here. And I think I can probably move my palette down a little bit so you can see what I'm mixing. Okay. So, maybe a bit too close, there we go. I'm going to add a little, little bit of color, I'm going to brush things on. This is still pretty warm, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll sort of scumble it in or scrub it in with my brush, but uh, this color is still fairly dark. Or, sorry, it's still fairly warm. I'm going to add a bit, sort of lighten it up as I go down too. I don't work at, um, I know in caustic wax, like the working temperature is kind of a 170 and up, but I find these sort of pancake griddle type of pa um, palettes, they, they, um, they cycle on and off and they like to smoke a little bit. So I generally work at a bit of a lower temperature than might be ideal. I tend to have to bump it up here and there just to make sure my pot is completely melted that kind of thing. Okay, I'm just brushing it on lightly and I do want to have it a bit lighter at the bottom here. And I will fuse this to make it pretty smooth. We'll see what happens. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I think that will be nice. A solid color and that's fine that's kind of what I want okay yeah that'll be good all right so uh, to do I'm gonna start with this sort of branch in the middle as you can see it has quite a bit of texture and usually I will do that kind of thing with a fan brush and just sort of use the edge of it. I've got some kind of a transparent dark color over here and I'm going to work with some raw umber, nice dark brown. And I use this sort of messy dark color just to, just to thin out my paint a bit. And I tend to draw straight lines. It's a bad habit, so I'll try not to do that. And I feel that you get a nicer, a cleaner edge if you just sort of use that corner of your fan brush. Build up a little bit of texture there. And I think I'm going to go up this way. I don't usually go over it a few times before I fuse it. One 
once you get your lines down, you can you can do some dabbing to build it up. But I find if you dab along the edges, it will it doesn't leave a nice clean edge. But I'm gonna do a little bit just to build it up. And I'll sort of stay in the middle there. Thin this out a little bit more. And I think I'll put one maybe down here, I guess. I'll leave lots of room for my apple to hang right there. And for this part, it's I find it is better to work on a warm surface because you don't want to really fuse this away. So um, I don't know I just feel like warm on warm wax will uh, bond just fine. You don't have to worry about a super strong fuse. Just a little bit. Okay, that's probably good for now. I'm going to give that a quick fuse just to smooth it out a little bit. And I'm going to keep building that up as we go along. Alright, let's see here. I'm going to keep my reference there a bit. Just adjusting the video. Can't see my mixing, but um, it's just uh, raw umber that I'm using at the moment. Let's make these a little bit, a little wider. too. I mean, and then working in that warm wax, you can definitely add some texture in there, which uh, is great for branches. They are fun to make. I think. And I think we'll go a little bit off here. As you can see, that makes a pretty good, pretty good line. That one's a bit shaky, but it is a tree. All right, I think we'll go this way. Random can be hard to do. Yeah, so we don't need to have too many of these because we are going to inscribe the, the other lines. So we'll just build these up a little bit more. And really, you can go as far as you want, as far as thickness. going to fuse that again. Just going to kind of move those out of the way a little. I 
I do mostly small paintings, but I do have some large, and I have a different area where I fuse large paintings, and I have the Iowa Tawani torch, which is pretty intense, so I have a separate table that I fuse on. All right, so I'm going to let that cool a little bit and um, start looking at my apple. I'm going to clean some of the, this off of here, this blue, because I need some space for my red. Okay, I've got cadmium maroon here. Let's start with that. That's pretty dark. And for my apple, I think I'm going to use this really tiny little, it's called a scumbler. Um, yeah, that should work. Because I don't want it to be a big apple. Aha, uh -huh. big apple. Okay. I'm going to put it a little bit down from my, my branch just so I can connect it. And I'm just really going to dab on. Now let's not dab too much here because I'm going to, I do want a nice smooth edge as much as possible. These small brushes heat up fast, but they cool off fast too. I want it big enough that we can kind of play with it a bit. This one seems to work pretty good. I think the next time I go to the art store, I'm going to have to get one of these. And this other brush here is called a Fluffy Mop. These are Princeton Select. Um, I think they're natural hair brushes. Honestly, I didn't check. Because I work at low temperatures, I, I, you know, I don't find the, um, that I'm ruining my brushes. I do definitely try to get the natural hair brushes, but... Sometimes I uh, don't really know what I'm buying and it works, they work good. Like this one here I don't think is a natural, that looks more like a synthetic. These ones, these ones do. Same with the fan brushes, they are probably a synthetic brush, but they, uh, they last pretty good. Okay. I'm going to have to heat this guy up. He's getting a little bit thick. Now the trick is to smooth him out without completely melting him down. So you want to lose a, use a very low flame. And basically I'll just sort of make a pass in every direction. He's a little bloppy right now, but we'll fix him up. Okay, I'm going to give him a little bit more in the middle here and see if I can sort of paint into this edge. Hopefully my head's not in the way. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I really love that sculptural quality of encaustic wax. Let's get him a little rounder. I think he's a bit wonky. All right. Get it up here. I'll try and build it more in the middle. Okay, that's probably plenty thick. For those of you who are not using a torch, I have to say it made a huge difference in controlling the wax. I used a heat gun for the first mm, five or six years and uh, I did a workshop with Alicia Tormey, and that was in person, and she, so I learned how to use the torch there, and yeah, it's quite the life changer. 
Okay, so you can see that the edge is not very smooth at this point, but we will go in with this tool once it cools down a bit and we'll give that a bit of shape. And we'll probably have to do a little bit of fixing around the edges, but that's okay. I think we should be able to disguise that. I'm gonna clean this tool off though, because you, you definitely, I usually kind of work with a couple because once they get a bit of wax on them, they, you know, they're not as clean to work with. So I don't think I'm gonna need those. And while this is cooling, or as it cools, we can start drawing in some of these, these other lines. And um, you don't want to go too deep at this point because as you carve these in, the wax likes to curl up. And when you fuse those, it leaves little, little bits um, on the edge. And, and I don't like those, I like to get rid of them, but we'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna kind of start here. I find that, you know, doing this on a cooled panel works best, but for this purposes, I think we'll just be fine. And I have my other palette over here. I'll go back and I just sort of melt the, the wax off the edge of this tool and keep it clean. So as this cools, I'm going to go a little deeper. And I try not to make my lines too straight because it's a bad habit. But I'll leave some room for some, some little leaves as well. And I'll put some other little, I'm gonna leave, oh, maybe I'll put it in. So you want these to be if you know thick enough line that you can that you won't lose it as you fuse. And generally, you know, when you make this, you can see the edge is kind of messy. Hopefully that's visible to you. But I'm gonna scrape that back before I fuse. Really, by the time this painting is done, you'll have gone over these lines multiple times. So you don't have to get them right down to the wood. This is a fairly, fairly thick wax on here. And for the scraping part, I'm just gonna take my gloves off so I can sort of feel what I'm doing a little bit more. Okay, so move this guy over. This tool here, I'm gonna to try to use it as flat as I can to the surface, just to sort of scrape that. Because I don't want to scrape my background off, I just want to take these edges off. And they kind of tend to fill in, but we'll go back over and it's sort of a, a real back and forth process for this part. You want the lines. I, don't, I mean, you can leave those edges on and fuse them, that's fine. But I try to get rid of as much as I can because I like it to be a nice clean, clean edge. So I don't worry too much if it fills in here because I'm going to go over them again. And I find, you know, as over time, as I do this, and the wax cools, it just doesn't curl up as much and there's not as much to take off. Okay, and I'll just clean off my tool again. And as this gets cooler and cooler, I 
it seems to work better. But the trick, yeah, you want to have this tool nice and flat and then you can really control. Now some people use razor blades, that will work as well. I'm just not as proficient with a razor blade as some people are. Yes, already that's a little bit cleaner. Still pretty soft. But I'm still waiting for this to cool off to the point where I can scrape around the edges of it. I think it's almost there. Okay, we can add more of these in later. All right, I wanna make sure that this tool is clean. Clean and cold. All right, I'll switch to this one because it's cooler. So I'm just going to try to clean up the edges of my apple here and also give it more of a rounded appearance. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that by very gently going around the outside of the apple. And inevitably you'll take a bit of your background as well, but we can scumble a little bit of that back in if we need to. Close to this branch here, I had to tilt it a little bit with, with the pointy part. And of course there's numerous tools that would probably work for this. I'm also going to sort of scrape up from the edge onto the apple just to try to Clean that up. You basically really have to scrape this red off every every time because what'll happen is you'll just spread it onto your background and you'll have to remove it. Which I'll probably end up doing at some point. I do like to kind of get underneath a little bit just to really give it that 3D type of look. A bit of red there. Like these tiny, tiny little pieces can really mess up your painting. Okay, and I'm gonna try and just bring this up off the edge there so it doesn't melt back down when I fuse it. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's see what happens. I'll just clean this off. Very gentle flame, very gentle fusing. Okay, now you can see, I hope, the little bits that sort of curled up along the edges of those lines. I always try to get rid of those. I just don't like them. So I'm just going to make a few passes <clears throat> until they're, they're gone as best I can without melting it away. Get my edge a little bit too. So what happens as you fuse these lines too, what sometimes your color from beneath will come up. And I use that gray, so it's not super noticeable, but I can remove that if I choose or I could paint over it. So, all right, my apple's looking pretty smooth. It's very ripe. 
So I'd like to give him some highlights and whatnot, but I think I'll probably leave that till the end a bit. Okay, so I think at this point it's uh, a good idea to continue on with my branches. Get some more wax out there. Oops. Just back to this raw umber. I think I'm going to switch to a smaller fan brush though. Just so I have a little bit more control. warming up. You can make fairly thin lines with these fan brushes. You know as they get used they get more worn so I do replace them fairly regularly. I keep using the old ones too, but but for some more of these delicate type of paintings. I'm just gonna use this bigger one for down here. Yep, there we go. It makes a nice line. Now you probably can't tell from the vantage point you're at, but it is building up pretty good. And it's really up to you how much. And you can really get some interesting shapes in those branches as well. And I like to play those up when I see them. show you where we're at here. Hopefully you can see the how thick this is becoming. I'll try to tilt it for you. All right, so I'm going to leave any fixes around this apple to kind of the very end. Um, for these guys, I think I will just take a little bit of this bleed that came up from below with this loop tool here. I'll just take that, that off because I do try to avoid that, that look. And like I say, I'll be going over these branches multiple times. I might have a brush hair here. Those pesky brush hairs. If I have to scrape something out, I'll usually try to smooth it as well before I fuse. Okay. Put that back in. Alright, so 
the thicker your background is, the less likely you are to sort of scrape through to that color you have underneath. Alternatively, if you didn't want to have that dark color underneath, you could just work with a solid sort of background uh, color layering up to this, the point where you're ready to start um, doing your painting and then you can do an oil rub to bring out those lines. And I've done that. I, I like the look of an oil rub. I really dislike doing oil rubs though because I find wax, or the oil painting oil sticks just to be super messy. So I don't always, they're not my first go-to. I would like to definitely use them more often in a more efficient manner, I guess. But um, yeah, they're good products for sure. All right, I'm gonna put a little line up here and let's do some leaves. going to draw these in. What can I put in here? I'd really like to have some little pink flowers, but that wouldn't make sense with the apple. So maybe these leaves will be more on the orange, orange side. Okay, so the other thing I like to do is I like to put little um, bits of texture in my branch. I usually put in little, little knotty holes and scratches, and because we'll finish it off with some pan pastel, and that will really pick up that texture. This one's a bit loose. Time for a new one, but. You know, when you do these types of divots and holes, I mean, you don't have to go straight down. It Sometimes it, they, they can do really creative or give a really interesting look if you go from the sides and you know maybe change the shape a bit okay all right oh, I like that there okay. it's a big one make sure you don't have any bits of brown that are gonna melt onto your background Okay, so let's give that a light fuse. Try not to overdo it. I usually will go every direction just to sort of get everything.
saw a good meme today for Mother's Day. It was it said, I'm just a mom trying not to raise assholes. And uh, I like that. My kids are teenagers, so I can relate. Okay, so I'm thinking that's pretty good. Now I'm trying to remember if I did my leaves with pan pastel or if I painted those in. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of these little blips um, around just as, I don't know, I don't know what they're going to be, but I'm going to put some in. Maybe they're apples that are still very small, so let's make them red. And once again, you can use your fan brush for that. I'm just going to clean this off. And... I'll make them a little bit lighter. Let's go with with that. And I'm going to just thin that out a little. Maybe we'll put a little bit of this bright red in there. Okay. There we go. So I'm just going to basically Give myself a little dot here and there. Well, that's not, it's got to be pretty warm. So you might have to let your brush sit there a bit. Ooh, that's a big one. I'm just being fairly random. I have enough wax on there so that it'll drip. I'm going to put some here too. Less is more probably. gonna work on this apple a little bit. I'm gonna stay away from the edges just so I don't have to try to clean those up again. And I want some lighter color too. Let's see what I have I got. I've used that one already. I do have a pink here. Let's see. Maybe I'll just do some of this really bright red over here a little bit so it's not offensive I very rarely paint with red I'm such a blue green person all right that's I'm gonna just fuse that quickly I want these little beads to stick, so I'm going to try to give them a fairly good fusing without making them go bleh. You know, you know what I mean, the bleh. Sometimes there's not a real word to explain things. some nice texture there. This one kind of concerns me and that one too. They look like they're just sitting on top but I think uh, I think we're gonna be all right. By the time we're done they might they might do the bleh but uh, it's okay. We can have some variety. All right so I'm gonna give this apple a, a little bit more of this bright red here and you just keep your layers thin so you don't have to do a lot of fusing or scraping and you should be able to get some highlight on there. I feel like a little bit of green would be good too. Let's see. But 
maybe not with that brush. Clean this one off. Visit that. What I do want to do, I have a little bit of blue here still. I'm just going to try and sort of touch up around my apple here where I was scraping and just put a very light bit of wax that I can hopefully fuse in. I'll see if there's anywhere else that I might want to do a little touching up. Maybe over here a bit. I'm just going right over that line. That should be okay. I'll just put it back in. Maybe over here by this branch. You know, I'm just really disguising it more than trying to cover it up completely. All right, so I'm gonna fuse that and see what happens. See if my fixes worked. Very lightly. You know, you, you don't have to fuse it in the first pass. Go back. Sometimes you have to even let it cool to, to get her done. It's tempting though, isn't it? Ooh. Okay, I think I'm at the edge there. I'll come back to that in a bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow ochre and maybe a little bit of this um, this green here. Uh, I can't remember what that is offhand. Okay, I'm gonna use this guy for my. And I'm mixing a little bit of the yellow ochre with that greeny yellow. I'm just going to dab in a bit here. Because it's okay, I think if they have some texture, Gonna add a little bit of clear medium there just to thin that out. All right, I'll go up here. And I've gone out of the lines a little bit, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I'll just take it off. And I'm gonna try to go over this a little bit with my blue, what I might have left on my brush, just because I don't like that look there. Same with this right here. Now, and maybe a bit of white there with my blue, and I'll just go along here. Now, as far as highlighting these branches, I mean, you can do it with wax. That is a definite possibility, and maybe I'll just sort of show you here. I'm just using a light color to it's almost like pretty much a dry brush technique and um, you can see that shows up pretty good but I think I'm going to actually use that 
gold pan pastel, so I'm going to cover that up a little bit. It does help to add more texture too. need a little bit more branches so maybe I'll put some thinner ones in I just won't make them as deep just to sort of fill a bit of this space here Okay, let's give that a fuse. I think we're almost done. And, you know, this is just a, a little makeup brush, I think. It's got a bit of color on it, but I think it should be okay. So this is still warm, and I'm going to try not to get it on the background. If we do, I don't think it's too big of a deal. And you know what, before I go too much further, I think I want a bit more texture in here, so I'm going to sort of draw some of that in. And I might do a little bit of a circular thing around there. And just to give it some character. Now these, um, they do need to be fused because you can't, you can't seal the pastel. It sticks pretty good. Like this one, it doesn't rub off anymore, but I, you know, I gave it a number of passes. And as long as you don't layer it in too thick, it should be, it should be good. And you want to rub it in as well. This one's got a little bit more texture on it because I did a bit more of that dry brush with the wax. Give it some rubbing. A bit more here. Well, actually, putting a little silver on here is kind of nice. I like that. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside. Okay, I'm going to take my finger and just give it a rub because that little bit of heat from your finger will help sort of set that pastel in. At least that's what I've been told. Okay. Now, that apple and those branches. You know what? Maybe, not the branches, but the, um, the leaves. Maybe we'll put a little bit of this gold on the leaves. Just a bit. Maybe we'll add that onto this apple. Hopefully it's not too much. I think I'm going to add a little gold in, into it as well. This one I think I will try and rub. Okay, well that's shiny. I don't know if I like that, so I think I'm going to fuse it and then probably paint over that apple part. Okay, so very gentle fusing. Once again, I'm going to make a number of passes just to heat it up. 
You want it, want it to glisten, not melt and move. Because then it will all be for naught. Okay, I think the fusing with that apple actually helped that bit of pastel. Okay, I think I'm done. Except for a signature. You know what I will do though? I had this on the piece I did the other day, which didn't work out. Not every painting turns out. I'm just gonna put a little hole here for the apple bum. <laughs> okay, and then my signature, same as I did for the branches. a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to clean my edges too. I just usually melt them down on here. Try not to get it going over the face. Alright, and I usually will give it a scrape too. Try to make them as clean as I can. This wax I usually won't reuse because it's generally got bits of wood, but I try to throw everything back in my pot and um, Every now and then I'll just strain it. Okay, so I think the back is pretty good. I, I'm gonna, I'll set the, the um, picture on my other palette because it doesn't have an edge on it, so I'll clean up the back. So one last fuse and this should be done. I feel like I should have put a leaf on my apple. And I did get a little bit of a shadow of red around the apple, so I'm gonna wait till this cools and I'll clean that up a bit. You never know, I might tweak a few things here, but generally pretty happy. A lot of times when I paint, it doesn't turn out the way I intended and um, that can be frustrating. And I do have some little tiny easels that I use to display these. I'm just looking for one right now. Okay. Um, for these little wooden pieces, this one's got a lot of wax on it, but um, I bought these off of Etsy. Uh, it's called Metally. I'll post a link for you, but they they're just really super light, little, thin, almost like just table card holders, but they work great for these. I like the look of them. Um, you do have to usually adjust them a bit. If you play with them too much, you'll never get them back. But um, I won't set that one in because it's still too warm, but they, they work perfect for these little guys. Anyway, so that's, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little project. And um, happy Mother's Day. Hope to see you again.